Aloha and welcome to Political Quickie, your political show that subjectively discusses political headlines in South Africa and all around the world. My name is Mapa Um, It seems that the University of Johannesburg is not immune, apparently, um, from dodginess. Um, two senior managers have allegedly swindled 25, 25 million rands from the university um this was apparently done within a period of three years and um that money was hoid into their business um the two have been suspended since then however and um however what what bothers my liver is how on earth did uj miss this um uj is so meticulous in terms of putting a lid on the movements of their students um they've had so many security guards that the the place actually feels more like a prison than it does a university um so how do you have so much control over your students and almost zero control over the people that work for you maybe maybe to UJ, control over the students is more important than control over the funds that run the institution. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. So moving on, however, um, this is Ntutuzi Manana. Ntutuzi Manana is the Deputy Minister of Higher Education and Training. Allegedly, Ntutuzi Manana has got a tendency He's got one of those tendencies of mooring women. Yeah. So first, Zinke Mkoshwani, who was moored uh, in Emelo in Bumalanga at a nightclub. And then recently, Mandi Satuma, who was also moored in a nightclub, but in four ways in Johannesburg. <laughs> There were red, red flags. In 2015, um, you know, some media outlet ran a story about how these uh, VIP bodyguards were exposing ministers who were abusive. Not abusive like dish dish, but abusive as in they don't treat them well. Um, and so in that instance, Ntutuzi, my nana's name, was Hoyt in the mix. And apparently, you know, he turns up until the early hours of the morning. And um, he fired about five bodyguards within a period of a year. Yeah. So there were red flags before. People are particularly mad because um, this happened during 16 days of activism against women and children abuse. But does it make a difference when something like this happens? No, it doesn't. Um, I think for me personally, I'm not mad in this instance at the patriarchy. What I'm mad at is the anarchy. For instance, when you walk out of the place that you live and you walk down the street, um, the cat calling that you experience as a woman is just beyond me. I mean, almost every day of your life, if you're a girl, you'll experience this versus or my size, whatever that means, right? My size. Yeah, you'll experience that. And then these days they've decided to take it up a notch where they touch you without your permission. So if you're living in a place of anarchy like that, what happened to Mandisa is not inevitable. Um, I think, you know what, I just want to see justice. I'm not even going to talk about how disgusting this is. I just want to see justice. Let justice prevail in this instance and let this man be behind bars and let's not be playing games. Let's not be playing games. Anyways, however, moving on to international news. Um, Kim Jong-un has been slapped with sanctions by the United Nations. Now, Kim Jong-un is the president of North Korea. So actually, North Korea was the one slapped with sanctions. Yeah. Um, this is because of <laughs> his missile uh, tests. He's been doing this. There have been 11 different missile tests that he's con conducted. Um, two of them were intercontinental. Do you hear how dangerous this sounds? Intercontinental missile tests. 
super dangerous. Um, so the U.S. has been particularly angry because um, he's been threatening them. Like, I'm going to bomb you. And then the sanctions happened. And then now he's like, I vow to attack the U.S. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. But, you know, a lot of people have been saying that, you know, this is what World War Three will look like. The U.S. on one side, Russia and North Korea on the other side, and the rest of the world will just kind of pick a side, pick a side. So, um, yeah, no, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I feel like uh, realists will say, no, Kim's got a point here. He's got the right to protect his, his country by, you know, developing more nuclear weapons. Um, but then liberals will be like, but no, you know, human lives are involved. He can't be doing such things. So... <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a realist or a liberal. <laughs> I, all I'm saying is, um, I don't think World War Three is near. I think in the near future, Donald Trump will probably be impeached. And then Kim will come down. And then Russia will come down. And then the whole world will kind of sort of come down. Um, but yeah, they'll just be fighting. But I don't think World War Three is near. Well, I hope it's not. I hope it's not. I mean, it sounds funny to talk about like, oh, World War Three, you know, you know, Russia versus the U.S. and Kim on the other side. But actually, this isn't funny, and I hope it doesn't happen. I hope so. I hope so. Anyways, be good, be awesome. Um, use your talents to serve humanity. I love you guys so much, and I will see you next week.